Well, hello and welcome to another fantastic audio tutorial. My name is Dave Bodhi from BodhiMedia.tv, bringing you this tutorial exclusively for audio.tutsplus.com. In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up and use a contact library called Olympus Elements from the good folks at Sound Iron. Now, I've covered a few other Sound Iron contact player libraries before, and this one is not altogether too dissimilar. What makes this one unique is it's kind of a stripped down, scaled down essentials version of a larger library called the Olympus Symphonic Choir Collection which is comprised of their Venus Women's Choir and their Mars Men's Choir. In the Olympus Elements, Player Edition is a contact library, and this works with the free contact player, and it's basically just the essentials. So you get the core eight vowels, you get sustains, you get staccatos, vowel blending, they have some marcados, with some time stretching options. They have some simulated legato patches, and then they have true legato sustains on the ah and the ooh vowels. So in addition to the vowel sustains, the legatos, the staccatos, and the marcados, they also have some classic choral effects, sweeps, swells, shouts, whispers, and more. As usual with sound iron libraries, there are some kind of atmospheric patches in there, and they include 21 natural environmental reverb impulses, including halls, cathedrals, churches, and studios, and more for you to use as well. So a lot of stuff going on in here. Pretty cool library. You can check out the demos here. This is a pretty small library. It's 2.52 gigabytes installed, and that's broken up into 53 or so patches inside there. Now the full library is much, much larger. You're looking at 44.6 gigs installed, and it's almost 700 patches. This is the essentials, this is the elements. So we're gonna check this out here. Now installing a library like this is gonna work very similarly to any of the other contact libraries that we've looked at from SoundIron, and you can check those out. I've done a video on Anti-Drum 2 and High School Drum Corps. They all use this Continuata installer app, so you plug in your serial, it downloads, Sound Iron's files, for the most part, auto extract themselves. So after it gets done downloading, it'll automatically extract the RARs and put them in the right folder. So all you have to do is basically drag the folder over to where you have your sample libraries and then point contact to it. And once you're in contact, it's pretty easy to add the library. You just click add library. You browse to wherever the library is and you hit okay. And if it's a contact powered library, it'll show up here which Olympus Elements is. Not all contact libraries work that way, but Olympus Elements does. So here's kind of the main folder list of the instruments inside Olympus Elements. So let's take a look at a few of these here. First, we'll open up the sustains and let's open up this one right here. Now, these all kind of have a different footprint in terms of memory usage. None of these are really super small except for the ambience patches. They all take up a pretty good chunk of memory. And so you're looking at the interface here and in the ensemble patches, how they have this laid out, basically there's kind of two layers here. In most of the patches, that's how it'll look. And the interface here is pretty much identical to the interface here. We have the men here and we have all of the different vowels. And over here, we have the women and all of their different vowels. And those are key switchable. And down here in the red is the key switches for the men's vowel sounds. And then we have kind of female, and then this is kind of the male. And then in the middle here is where the ranges cross. So this will be where the men go up and they stop at about this A here. And then the females, they stop at this F down here. And you can see here, if we click on this blend button here and we slide it over to the men, And then if we slide this over to the women, we can hear where the women stop. Right there. And so the men, they stop up here at this high A. That's their note. And we control click here to put it back in the middle. It is a nice sounding library. 
Now this is a sustain patch. And in here we have a couple of controls which you will be reaching for quite often. One is the swell. And I believe this is how you do dynamic crossfading, if you will. So to switch through the dynamic layers, that's with this swell knob here. And by default, this loads up with the mod wheel not doing anything. So what I usually do is I right click here, say learn MIDI, and then I go over here and say learn MIDI CC automation. Then I move the mod wheel. Then what I usually do is I come here to the attack and I say learn here and then I move another controller. Now here I'm using the Korg Nano Control 2, which I've also done a video on. And it comes in especially handy when you need multiple controllers to kind of control things and make things a little bit easier when you're recording. I use the Korg Nano Control, which I also have programmed. You see the mod wheel moving there. I'm actually moving the first fader. I have the first fader programmed to CC1, the second one to CC2. And you can also see, if you right click here, you can see this is set to CC2. You can remove it, you can have it learn another one if you wanted to. And usually what I'll do is I'll come over here and sometimes I will, uh, I'll set this to learn a MIDI automation, not necessarily on these full ensemble patches where it's men and women. That's not usually something that I need to do. So the attack basically adjusts the attack of the note. So you can make that real gradual. Which is kind of nice. Now you'll hear the sound of this is, it's not dry, but it's not fully chamber choir wet either. You can hear there is some kind of release in there where you get some kind of room tone. And by default, there is no reverb or effects applied to this. Uh, we have offset here. And basically this is kind of a sample start offset. So you can hear how this sample starts here. And, and I'll turn this up a little bit so you can hear. There's kind of a, an attack there. Ah, you know, it's that initial attack. So by turning up the offset, It basically scoots those samples over so you're now attacking after that initial attack has happened. So, and there's also release and you can make that real tight as well. We also have release volume and the release volume controls the volume of the release samples only. This can be used to fine tune how quiet or loud the room decay is when a note is released. So if we turn this down, You can hear there's like, there's no kind of release sample triggered there. You don't get that tail of the room, but if we put this right back, you do get that and we can even crank it up as loud as it goes here. Now this isn't affecting the overall room tone at all. It's affecting the release samples. So it's only affecting when you release the keys right there. So again, about the sound here, the full library has two different microphone mixes that you can use. They're composited from 12 mic positions that they use to record this collection. The Elements Edition just uses one, and I believe it's the wide, close stage blend microphone position. So you don't have that far or hall sound. But we can add some reverb to this and kind of get some more of that ambience back in there. We have this legato section in the middle here. And basically this is simulated legato because this patch is not their true legato sampled driven patch. So if we turn this on, It kind of cross fades in between the notes just a little bit. Now, as far as the range is here, that's what this setting is right here. And so by default, it's set to 12, and I believe that's 12 half steps, which is an octave. So in order to get polyphony here, we have to set this to something smaller if we want anything less than an octave. So if we set it to 11, we can get 
both of those C's to sound. And if we want anything closer, we're going to have to turn the legato down. So now we can do a perfect fifth because we have one, two, three, four, five, six is a tritone. So we have a perfect fifth there. And so we can kind of get multiple lines there going, but getting them close together becomes problematic with this. So I don't generally prefer to use this, but it's there. So you have it. And so that's the sustain patch there. And, and there's effects over here. We have reverb, right? So clicking that. Gives us some nice convolution reverb. And here you can see some of the impulses that it, that it comes with. And you have some nice parameters here that you can adjust. We have vibrato and then some basic EQ stuff here as well. Most of the time I usually just throw on some reverb in here and kind of adjust the size or the, the space. As needed. A lot of these patches will be broken down similar to how you see them broken down here. So we have a sustain men, okay? And this is just the men's. We have basses and tenors. We lost all of our automation here, but... Uh, What this allows us to do is because this is just the men and it's not one of their Divisi patches, is now it's men on both layers. So you can load up two different vowels. So right now is ah and ooh, and we can play. Sound better with a little reverb on here probably. which is very nice to do. And then you have Divisi patches too. Now Divisi stands for division. Instead of just the men, we have tenors and basses. So we'll have those on two separate layers, which will give you a bit of kind of separate control over each one of those. Now we have just the basses over here if we click the blend on. Which go up to that E and that's it. Then we have the tenors which go down to that C. These other kind of settings are, are very similar. We can, you know, you can blend between the tenors and the basses here, which is interesting. For me, I don't find these the most useful stuff for composition, but it's there. So there you go. Uh, now onto some other cool stuff. You have a vowel master folder here. So the vowel master here as it loads up, this is similar to the other kind of sustain stuff, except now, we have the option for staccatos as well. So some cool stuff there. You can automate this button here. So we could say, I want it right here. Um, I just programmed that to a button on the Korg Nano control. So now I have it as toggled. And all these other controls are basically the same. And then if you look over here, you have men to VZ, men, women to VZ, and then women, right? We, they have patches that are just staccato. Then we have marcados. Now marcados are kind of a full volume, more of an accented attack to the vowels. They're not like the regular sustains because these are not infinitely sustainable like the sustain patches. So they're just kind of full volume. Now, the other interesting thing here is you can see that there's a lot less controls, right? We don't have any kind of a legato here, but you don't see a release sample uh, because these don't have that. By default, these play and they're, it's kind of set up like a one shot sample thing. So it plays. And so what you have to do is you have to adjust the release if you want them shorter. The one that I think is really cool is this one right here, is the legato patches. 
Now, just like all the other ones, we have Legato Ensemble, Men Divisi, Men, Women Divisi, Women. Then there's one, a time stretch option here if you have Contact 5. And these will, you'll be able to use Contact 5's time stretch function, and I'll, I'll load that up here, to be able to time stretch the speed of the intervals here. And I'll show you what this sounds like. So instead of before in the sustains where we have ah, 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 now we have ah, 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 we have a very nice legato sweep in between the notes and it's not banging out notes. So this makes for some beautiful sounding lines here. Now this also has polyphonic legato, but we run into that same issue of kind of ranges here. I find that doing polyphonic legato lines in one of these patches a little bit tedious. For me, it's easier just to load up multiple instrument patches, which we'll go over in a couple minutes. But now if we back out here, we also have two more folders here. We have choral effects. These are gonna be all of the effecty type stuff. So we have falls. Those are male falls, if you can believe it. And by default with the release set to full, it, it kind of has that one shoddy effect. Where it takes a really long time. I mean, I, I think they are, I think they are doing some kind of release fade in there, but they do go on for a long time. So we have clusters. And a whole bunch of stuff like that. The women sound really nice on some of these clusters. Whispers. And so a lot of interesting stuff in here. We won't go through all of them, but pretty cool. And that's a nice added feature to the standard stuff that they have in here. All right, enough checking out the patches. Let's jump in here to Reaper and take a look at how to use this in some compositions. So here I have a basic little kind of choral arrangement. I have a template that I've set up and I'll show you what that looks like here. It is eight MIDI tracks and eight audio returns. And then, like I said before, I'm not a huge fan of the way that the polyphonic legato works in those legato patches. I basically wanted a template that I could have so that when I loaded it up, I would have access to four part legato stuff so I could do four part legato voices. Which is not the Divisi. And the reason why I did this is because these women and men patches, as opposed to the Divisi patches, uh, these allow you to blend vowels in the women's section. Same thing for the men. And so what I wanted was to have access to three part women harmony and three part men harmony if I ever needed to, you know, instead of kind of loading up something and then reconfiguring it. I figured this was, most of the time, it's gonna be soprano, alto, tenor, bass kind of stuff. But if I wanted to do a, a passage where the men have, you know, a nice three-part harmony thing going on or whatever, I wanted to have that kind of loaded up. And so that's how I built the core of the template there with three women legato, three men legato patches there. And because they use the same samples, it really doesn't mess with the overall memory load as well, because you're loading basically another instance with the same exact sample, so it doesn't load any additional samples. Then I loaded a Olympus Element Sustain Ensemble patch, and this is the very first one that we looked at. And I like this one because I can kind of lay down the parts like I'd like them to sound and get the voice leading kind of worked out, and then copy over the MIDI tracks to the individual parts, just delete the un- needed notes, the unnecessary notes. So for instance, the soprano, would just copy the MIDI part up and then delete the bottom three notes if they were four part harmony the entire time. Then the last one, I threw in an Olympus Elements Phrase Builder and we'll go over this in another project here where we'll look at it in a few minutes.
So piano in four parts. And so this is the soprano line. We have notes here, and then we have the mod wheel data here. And then we also have CC2, which is breath controller, here, and that's doing the vowel crossfading, if you will. Now, I believe, I don't think there's actually anything on CC27. In Reaper, it has a little bullet next to the MIDI data that's been modified. And I don't believe there's anything on 27. I'm not really sure what that's on. And hold pedal is not on either. So to get these to be legato, basically, all that you really need is the notes need to overlap a tiny little bit. So that's what we have here. There's no sustain pedal because I believe sustain pedal, turn this on. So it holds the initial note and then it does the legato transition up. But that's not what I wanted here. I wanted this to be, I wanted this to be one continuous legato line. And so there you go. Now the interesting thing about this, and I'm not exactly sure how it works, is that unlike some other libraries that have some kind of velocity crossfading, this library is sensitive to key velocity. So that's a pretty hard attack there, and here's a light attack. So there is definitely a difference there. So in creating the dynamics for each one of these tracks, it was a combination of doing the mod wheel data, which I had set to control the swell in the interface, and then also a little bit of, of the actual velocities of the notes. And so at the beginning of each one of these phrases, I wanted it to start a little quieter. So one thing that we didn't talk about earlier when we looked at the legato is there's actually a speed control and an interval volume control. So you'll notice that that very first interval, it's not altogether out of place, but if we wanted that to be a little quieter, we could jump over here and turn that interval volume down. So we can kind of program that as well and we can automate that. You know, all these things are automatable. We can also adjust the speed of these as well. And I believe if we look in the Legato, there's actually time stretch versions of these, which will probably do a higher quality speed adjustment of these interval changes. So right now they're just kind of snapping, but if we pull the speed all the way down, now you're getting, ooh, it's more swoopy. So I'll control click those and put them at the default. For this particular piece, I felt like the default level was okay. Some of the, some of the volumes of some of the interval leaps may be a little bit loud, but in context of the whole thing, I think it kind of works to give it some realism. You can see here as we go down this phrase, that this slowly fades. it almost gets like halfway between an ooh and an ah. And halfway between an ooh and an ah is an o. Ooh, ah. Halfway in between there, there lives an o vowel. Now technically this is not doing, you know, some advanced kind of mouth morphing thing. It's just, it's crossfading between the ooh and the ah samples. So in the middle here, it does kind of sound like an o. And then the next phrase, it, it goes all the way down to ah, and then back to ooh. So after I'd done all of the parts together, I record enabled all of them and set them to MIDI overdub. And I just programmed all of them using the CC2 controller on my Korg Nano Control 2. And that's how I got all of the swells and fades to be the same.
All right, here we are in Reaper again. And this is actually the first project that I did with Olympus Elements. And that's why it's all gray and ugly. This was before I made up my template. Let me play this down. So basically what you're hearing here is some strings. I have a little bit of percussion and I have uh, mostly a soprano line kind of carrying the melody. In the middle here we have this kind of four part thing that happens with some legato patches. And then there's this kind of uh, rhythmic thing that's going on the entire time. Now if you've ever seen the Disney Pixar movie Finding Nemo, you may be familiar with this cadence of vowels, a, ah, u, a, ah, e. What drives this is another one of the patches that we briefly looked at, and that's the phrase master patch. And so what the phrase master patch allows you to do is basically switch in order different articulations. So for instance, and so this is the phrase number one. We can do something like a, ah, o, oh, a, eh. Ooh. And you can see there's 16 steps, so I just loaded up six. And then there's a toggle down here that we can actually load some of these as marcato and some of these as staccato, right? So now we get this. Now all of these things can actually be key switched in one of the other patches. What this allows you to do is it basically kind of automates that process and makes it a good bit easier. And so you can just kind of play them down rather than having to key switch a whole bunch of them. And I'm sure this works better with the full library where you have access to, to more things here. There's a bunch of different controls here. So if we hit this little toggle here, this puts up this little column, it gives you controls over the staccato articulations and the marcato. So you can control things like swell, you can control things like attack, release, release volume, you know, just like in, in the other patches here. And then here gives you some key switch options. Now we have select phrase key switch. And what this allows you to do, if we pop up the keyboard here, is if we click, this will start on the first one of this phrase. And so you can load up 16 of these, and then you can key switch to switch between these. Now, the one that I was using is 13 here. And then you can also select which step you want to use. And that's these green ones here. So if you want this to start on the first step, you can hit this E key switch right here, and that will fire this first one and it'll start from this first one. So that can be useful if you're kind of in a phrase and you know you need it to start with a particular step. Because what happens is these play sequentially. So if this somehow gets to the second one and then you start your phrase, it's not gonna sound right because you needed to start with that one. So it's kind of a way that you can bounce back and forth and get these phrases here to do what you want them to do, which is pretty cool. And so there you go. If we look at the MIDI data here, I've left the swell alone. I've only modified the velocity. I just drew a big old curve here. So it's basically just a giant crescendo here that goes through this whole thing. But you'll also see a couple of key switches here. Let me, you'll see a key switch here that starts the phrase on the first step. And you'll also see another one down here that triggers the 13th phrase. Now, in the beginning here, I also added 
to kind of beef up the soprano line, I added some legato violins. Really lightly. Which I think worked to great effect. It really helped kind of punch them up and really give them a more, I don't know, zingy quality, if you will. And that's pretty much it. Now, the, the names of some of these MIDI uh, tracks are actually all wrong because I've loaded up a different template and then just replaced the instruments. That's why this says grand piano when it's obviously not a grand piano. But a cool little test here, and I think this came out pretty good. All right, back in Reaper one more time. And this looking at a little bit more of a complicated orchestration here, although it's pretty short. This is using just two of the Olympus choir patches, but I wanted to see if I could do something a little bit more interesting in this one. One of the demos that I had heard of the full Olympus choir was this piece called March Onward Comrades by Oliver Codd. And so I wanted to see if I could do something similar here. The only problem is that when you only have vowels to work with, it's pretty much impossible to make words. But I threw caution to the wind and uh, this is what I came up with. Obviously there's a lot of stuff going on here. We have brass, we have woodwinds, we have a lot of percussion. So basically this is almost entirely driven by the phrase builder, which we looked at in the last little example. Here it's a little bit longer. It's a 12 step phrase that it's doing. I kind of figured out the number of things that I that I wanted and, and then I kind of programmed which vowels I thought would work. <laughs> I was kind of going by the number of pulses that I wanted, and then I picked vowel sounds that worked well in there. Now, obviously, big limitation here in, in uh, the fact that it's just, it's kind of sounds like gibberish. I think though that, you know, the, the only part that's really out of place is the beginning. Once, once the second kind of harmony part comes in here, here, It, it almost tricks the ear into thinking that, you know, these, these uh, guys are actually saying something, even though they're not. And especially at the end when it's big and raucous. To kind of beef that up a little bit, I also added a legato patch here, which starts off similar to, to what we looked at in one of the other examples here with some kind of vowel blending. And so it kind of starts off, I think this is with an ooh, and then it goes to kind of an ah, kind of combining those two. Gave a little bit more variety to the, to the vowel sounds. And it also kind of beefed up the, the intensity of the male part there to add kind of a second part to reinforce the melody there. Obviously that would have worked a lot better with some syllables in there, uh, some voiced consonants, things to make actual words, but uh, I think it came out pretty cool. Uh, with the stuff that we had going on there. I had a lot of fun making these little pieces and, and experimenting what can be done with this relatively simple library. You know, it doesn't have a tremendous amount of features, but it, it, the features that it does have work pretty well, I think. And the sound, even though this only has just the one mic position, the sound works really, really nicely here. And so there's a lot of stuff that, that you can do. And for the price right now, it's at 129. This is my temple loaded up here. And you know, it's only point eight, nine gigs with the stuff that's loaded. And most of that I think is this phrase master patch here because the other legato 
uh, patch here is only about 375 loaded in memory. It's reasonable on the resources. It's reasonable on the wallet for, for what you get. And it, it offers you a lot of stuff that you can put into your different arrangements, you know, not just orchestral stuff, because that's primarily what we looked at here, because it's got that really nice choral sound, you know, it can work in a, in a rock and roll ballad or, you know, just a, a ton of different stuff because it's got really nice sounding legatos for those oohs and those ahs. And so a lot of cool features here in Sound Iron's Olympus Elements. And so I hope some of those programming things helped you if you are going to check out this library. So thanks so much for watching this tutorial. Again, my name is Dave Bodie from BodieMedia.tv, bringing you this tutorial exclusively for audio.touchplus.com. And we'll see you around. Thanks for watching.